Hello, this is Andrew from DPS, and I want to give you an updated SCADA tutorial today. Our original SCADA tutorial video has been the most popular video on our channel for over nine years, but that does make it about a decade old, and technology does change over time. So I want to walk through some core SCADA concepts again, and give you some tips and tricks that you can use. Just as an absolute basic refresher, SCADA is an acronym for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. So the first piece there, you have an ability to control something, and data acquisition, you're going to be able to monitor it, to collect information about it. And any SCADA environment has two major pieces. First, you have the process or the system or the machinery that you have that necessitate remote monitoring and control. Why is it that you want to remotely monitor things and control them? You know, what is that system? If you're a factory, if you're a power distribution, whatever your operation is, that's a good way to sum up number one, your operation. And then number two is the SCADA system. So now that you have this thing that you need to remotely monitor and control, how are you going to pull that off? What system is going to give you those abilities? So those are the two pieces, the your operation and then the SCADA system itself. Where is SCADA used? You'll see it in a lot of different industries. Power utilities is a big one. Water and sewage, buildings, facilities, environments. Manufacturing, so if you have some kind of a factory, you're going to need some kind of a SCADA system to track everything and control things when they need to be changed. Mass transit and traffic signals. Anytime you have trains moving around or cars moving around, traffic lights changing, these are complicated systems and you need an ability to know what's happening and issue control commands when they're required. You might need SCADA if you need uninterrupted power and a protected environment. So if you have, say, a remote telecom site or a server room, a data center, a factory that has to be in certain temperature requirements, whatever it is, if you need to keep power flowing to something and have the environment protected, so the temperature is in spec, the humidity is in spec, there's not water on the floor, just you need to have good control, that's a reason to have SCADA. Number two, if you need to know in real time the status of your complicated system, there's no way that you can keep track of it yourself. You can't run around. If it's spread out across a large area, you can't be driving around. You need to have everything coming right to your desk. So that's what a SCADA system is going to do. And if you need to do monitor and control at remote locations, as I say, you can't be driving around. So even if it were possible in a factory environment to run around and even remotely have tabs on things. As soon as you start to have sites that are spread out across more than a few miles, that's never going to work. And SCADA is going to give you some key abilities. You're going to be able to look at things real time and historically like temperature, humidity, battery level, voltage, fuel level. Uh, the graph here is airflow and temperature for an HVAC system that's controlling the temperature in a key room. So that is another thing that you can monitor. You're going to be able to detect and correct your problems quickly. So SCADA gives you an almost psychic ability or situational awareness over your entire operation. And then as soon as you spot them, you can issue control commands. You'll be able to eliminate bottlenecks and inefficiencies. You'd be surprised. Remote monitoring isn't just, this is going wrong. It's an ability to log things over time and say, well, this is repeatedly going wrong. Why is that? Why am I wasting so much effort in this one area? And you can find that you'll be able to make an adjustment to your system. So that is a huge advantage of SCADA. That you, the insights you're going to get into the physics of your operation are really powerful. And finally, you're going to be able to control a bigger, more complex process without having to have a huge army of experts and really just a huge army at all. It is a force multiplier. So the team you do have with the training that you've given them are going to be able to accomplish a lot because the system provides a lot of leverage. It tells them maybe what to do. You could database in some response instructions. It's just giving them a nice, clear, intuitive picture of what's going on, and it makes it so much easier to manage a complicated system. So SCADA basically falls into four basic functions. And if we look at the diagram on the right, data acquisition being the first one. So that's in the lower portion of the diagram where the RTU is. And that is a kind of a collector device. So that could be pulling in contact closures, sensor data, protocol data. We'll get into some of that on the next slide. But it's collecting things, essentially. It's collecting data of certain kinds. 
And then there's data communication. So once you've got that data collected, it's got to go somewhere. It might You might have a lot of different RTUs in different locations spread out. How do you get them all to one place? And so that really revolves around the protocol that the RTU will use to communicate and what transport, like is it network or is it cellular or even satellite? How is it going to talk back to the central collector, which we call the master or the HMI? And I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, then there is data presentation. So once the HMI or the master has collected all that data, how is it going to show it to you? Are you going to get a text message? Is it going up on a screen? Do you see a map or a diagram showing how your process is flowing? Maybe you have different gauges that show analog values. What is the data and how is it going to be shown to you? And then finally, control. And this is really where we move in reverse. When you can issue a control command, you do that from your master and it goes down to the RTU in the relevant location and then that's going to be executed by the RTU to turn something on or off or change a flow rate or do just about anything. So let's get deeper into part one, data acquisition. You want to collect information from all reasonable sources. And I say reasonable because you don't want to go overboard, you don't want to go overkill, but contact closures are common. So if you have a piece of gear that latches a relay to tell you, hey, I'm running right now, or I'm overheating, or I'm a radio system and I've got a high level of noise, whatever that is, most manufacturers of equipment will give you at least a few relays to say, hey, I'm having a problem. So if you have a RTU that has discrete inputs, you can wire those in, and then you'll have an ability to monitor those. Protocol inputs are similar, but those are inputs that are based around a communications protocol instead of a physical contact closure. But it's the same basic premise. The device can send a message, your RTU can pick it up and then process it. And then some messages can actually go straight to the master. IP cameras, that's visual surveillance. And some actually are smart enough to do inspections. So if you have a manufacturing line, you could say, well, this widget is a little bit different than all the widgets that have come before. So I'm gonna throw up a red flag but it could also be just simple things like surveillance. Serial output, some devices will have a serial port and that can give you access to say Modbus protocol over serial, but there is a variety of different, you just need to consult your manufacturer for the equipment and see what you can get out of that serial port. And then door controllers, if you have a high security environment, being able to see what's going on with your doors is important. And so a smart door controller gives you some kind of output where it can tie into your SCADA system. The last two points here in data acquisition, you wanna give yourself some room to grow later. So if you're selecting an RTU, don't size it exactly to the number of inputs and outputs you need to do your monitoring and controlling. Give yourself a little breathing room because as you learn more, you're gonna find things and when you reach a certain point, you'll wish you had a little bit more. But at the same time, don't buy gear that's overkill. If you need four contact closures, don't buy one that has 128 inputs. That's just nonsensical. So maybe doubling your current requirements is reasonable, but don't go overboard. This is an example of some sensors. Uh, DPS actually makes these, and they're available in a variety of different configurations. This is temp and airflow. You can have vibration, temperature. You can take in a fuel level sensor from a propane tank or a diesel tank, wind speed. You got a lot of different sensors, and this is just one example of non-equipment that you can monitor if your equipment isn't smart enough. So if you have a device that doesn't monitor temperature, that's okay. You can just slap a simple little sensor next to it, and now you are monitoring temperature. So external sensors allow you to bolt new things into your system and collect data from the physical world that your other equipment doesn't automatically. Okay, then the second piece, data communication. Two basic pieces, protocol and transport. So first, what is the protocol that it's going to use? Some common protocols in the SCADA world include DNP3, Modbus. In a more telecom type environment, you might see SNMP. It's just a very common protocol. And there are lots of others. Some manufacturers will try to trap you with a particular protocol that only they support. But uh, sticking with a common standard is your best bet. And it's likely if you're in SCADA that you have one of the three that I've shown you. And then what transport? How are you going to send data? Sure, you're going to use one of those protocols, but across what? Is it going to be a network link? Are you going to have serial? Are you going to have a cellular modem? You can even have a satellite link nowadays. Those are coming down in price quite a bit and the bandwidth is going up. So how is it you're going to communicate? What is the link between your remote RTUs and your central master or HMI? Next, uh, data presentation. Now that that data has all been collected at a central collector, how are you going to know about it? It might be a map like the one I've got in the top right corner here. You can get an email, we can send you a text message. Your HMI console can have a variety of different screens. It could be a map, but it could be an analog gauge. 
It could be a big listing. However you want to see that. You can, Instead of a map, if you have a factory, you could do a, some kind of a, ma a diagram showing the flow through the factory. It doesn't have to be a geographic map. You can show some kind of process diagram and have little icons that change color when things are going right or wrong. You can even have voice messages be rendered out on radio. So if you have staff with handheld radios, really important status changes can be rendered as radio voice messages. And that same voice message could also go out on a phone so it can dial or have a cell modem to be dialing people to let them know, especially in the middle of the night, if it's a really serious situation, hey, you've got a problem, you need to respond. And you can have summary lights too. If you're in an environment where Maybe a control console is good, but it's not vibrant enough. You want to have some dedicated beacon lights that tell people in the room, you have a problem, you need to go log onto your console. You can do that to get a little more of an attention grab when something is changing. This is an example of a text message. You can see, this is from more of a telecom environment. You can see generator is running, door is open, channel bank alarm. So these are just things that have gone wrong out of the site and you need to know about and they go right to your phone. So having good clear descriptions is important. You can see there's also time stamping here and date stamps uh, and just good clear descriptions. It's very important. If you have a cryptic text message, there's just nothing worse because now you're racing around trying to figure out what's wrong. You need to do a good job with databasing and be sure you choose equipment that gives you these, this kind of flexibility to have a good description. And then the last part of SCADA is control. And a couple key questions here. You need to ask yourself, what outputs do you have? So we're back down at the bottom of the diagram here where the RTU is. And you can see on the left side of that RTU diagram, control relays. So that's one way you can do controls. You can latch contact closures and equipment that has discrete inputs can pick that up. And this is a good way to fire up a generator or turn on HVAC units, do just about anything. A lot of devices can accept this. A good rule of thumb, if it has a button or a switch, you can to undo the wiring there and wire it into a control relay and you can simulate the flip of that switch or the press of that button with a relay. So those are very flexible, very low level outputs. You can also do things like send SNMP traps to a device. A lot of devices that communicate with SNMP can take in a trap message and you could tell a server to shut down or just about any piece of equipment to do a variety of things. So if you can take in a message like that, that's certainly a good idea. And even if you don't have SNMP equipment, if you have DNP3 or Modbus, you can send a protocol message as long as your RTU is compatible. So just be sure you get equipment that supports the protocols you need. You can issue controls in one of two ways. You can do them manually. So you can look at the situation on your screen, understand what's going on, and then press a button on your keyboard that says, let's issue the control, let's, let's toggle this, let's turn something on, let's turn something off. But even better would be an automatic response. And this is what I have on the diagram on the right side for you. This is an example, it's pretty straightforward, of someone who had a dehydrator involved in a telecommunication system, and it should only run for about 10 minutes, but it had a bad habit of sticking on and burning itself up. And that was a huge waste, you had to buy a new one, it was just a, a big problem, it cost money. And, it was just wasteful. So what this person did was to configure a timer into the SCADA system to say, if this dehydrator has run for more than 20 minutes, which is double what it should have run, we're well on our way to 30 minutes where it's gonna burn up. You need to tell me that immediately. So you set a timer for 20 minutes and you say, I want to know immediately when it hits 20 minutes after it first turned on. Now that is a automatic alarm, it's, it's synthesized, it's smart, that's good. But then once you have that, you can tie a control relay to it. So as soon as you hit that 20 minute mark, we can throw a control relay switch, which might just kill the power to the dehydrator. Maybe if we wanna be a little more delicate, we can send it a protocol message to tell it, I don't care what you think you're doing, please turn off now. So you have a couple different options to actually execute that control, but the point is when a certain condition is detected, you can then execute an appropriate control command automatically, and then the system will log it, so you'll still know about it. But if you got up from your desk, and in this example we had just a 10 minute window to prevent some damage, the system will take care of it automatically. You don't have to be sitting around your desk all the time waiting for that alarm to come in. One of the last things I wanna talk to you about are RTUs versus PLCs. So a PLC is a programmable logic controller. And those are very common in SCADA environments. And if you are experienced, they can be pretty powerful. You can program just about anything because you're actually writing code. 
but conversely, you have to program everything. So there is a steep learning curve there. So if you're just getting started with SCADA, you have a choice about your architecture and you may want to look at an RTU or a remote terminal unit. And they're different from PLCs, even though they do the same role. You have built-in intelligence. So you actually have usually a web interface where you can configure the thing and you're not programming it. You're just setting things up. You're typing in the descriptions for your various alarm conditions. You're setting up rules that say, if this, then that, but you're not programming it from scratch. You're also likely to get firmware upgrades for new functions because there are actually functions built in. So your manufacturer may engineer a new feature and then release it for you to upgrade your unit. Whereas with the PLC, you're programming it from scratch, so any new feature is really up to you. So RTUs definitely have an easier learning curve, and if you're just getting started, it's definitely an option you should consider. I want to leave you the final thought from one of our clients who told me, the further you get with it, the more things you realize you can monitor and save money. And this is a guy who's been incrementally improving his system over the last six years or so. And he started off with a pretty basic setup and he's just layered things on and on. And you get to a point where you've drastically reduced the time and effort and stress related to managing your system and a lot more things happen automatically. So if you'd like any more information about SCADA, please send me an email or give me a call. Sales at dpstella.com is the email. You can call us here at DPS at 1-800-693-0351. And also, please just check out some more of my videos on YouTube, and I hope they help you out.